Hi all, in this video I am going to explain you about a timer in MSP430. First let us see the what all the timers it is available in our MSP430. We have a watchdog timer, basic timer, real time clock, timer A and timer B. Let us see where we are going to use those timers. Usually this watchdog timer is used to prevent from a malfunctions or in order to overcome an any infinite looping condition. Then we have an basic timer. This basic timer is used to drive an LCD modules or in order to get in any specified delay times. For those things we are going to use basic timers. And in order to keep track of a real time information we are going to use real time clock. Then we have a timer A. It is used in an analog to digital conversion process or if I want to drive anything in an interval manner for those things we are going to have this timer A and the similarly the timer B is also another function it is almost similar to your timer A okay we will see those things detail in an upcoming video lectures okay in today's video lecture we are going to see and mainly watchdog timer before getting into this timer concept we require some of the basic things whatever you have been studied in your earlier course in a digital circuit design you might have come across and counter synchronous or asynchronous counter all those things okay here i have been considering simple counter waveform okay here i have been considering positive edge triggered counter for every positive rising edge my counter gets incremented here I have been just taken a 4 bit counter this is the clock pulses have, have here and if you see the waveform across all the 4 output bits ok it is going to come in this fashion I hope everyone knows this waveform very well otherwise you can see this is your MSB bit QD QA is your LSB bit at first rising edge all the these 3 4 things are 0 then at the next rising edge I need to get incremented my LSB with an 1 ok now here you can see 0 0 1 here it is 0 0 1 then for the next rising edge it is goes to 0 my QB gets 1 that is nothing but 0 0 1 0 ok like that for every next rising edge my counter gets incremented by 1 and it is will be waveform is going to look like this ok here the time period of our input clock frequency is this is the time period we are going to take it right I hope everyone knows that how you are going to calculate frequency frequency is nothing but 1 over the time period ok by seeing this waveforms and this waveform you can tell that ok what is the time period it has been taken in my, my main clock pulse to QA ok in order to get this one clock pulses from year to year what is the number of uh, cycles it has been passed in our main clock ok here you can see 1 and then 2 ok that is nothing but it is going to take twice of our time period right ok if my QA is getting in twice of time period of an actual frequency then I can tell that this if I take an output from an QA bit it is going to get an off of the frequency of an original frequency what we have been used ok let us try to see that if I have been taken an QB straight away from this point what is the number of clock cycles for an each period ok it is periodic right ok here if I see for this particular part it is going to take two cycles in an original cycle then once again for an on period it is going to take two more cycles that is nothing but four time periods it has been going to take f is nothing but one divided by four time period you know that one over time period is an frequency that means qb is going to get an divided by frequency of an four similarly your qc is going to be getting divided by eight and qd is divided by 16 ok like that if you have an higher number of counters that is simply you can tell that 0th bit is going to take n divided by n2 next bit is by 4 <laughs> like that based on the bit position you can tell what it is the value it has been going to divide it ok that's how I can straight away divide the frequency in terms of n2 power by taking the different bit positions in an counter ok then if I want to get an any specific time delay ok suppose here I might be having an 0 0 1 0 ok until this count what is the 
time period it has been taken means simply I can know the time period value what it is simply I'm going to multiply that one within 6 okay what is the count I am going to have that particular count I am going to take and multiply by the time period so that we will be getting a required time period okay this is the basics required to understand all the timers okay frequency is nothing but one hour time period time period is nothing but one hour frequency if I want to know the delay to any specific count just I am going to take that what is the counter value into the time period we are going to multiply okay I hope everyone have understood this otherwise if you are having doubt with this one means you can refer your earlier studied subject counters what is the delay and frequency if you have taken in different bit positions okay now let us see this watchdog timer okay why we want to have an watchdog timer protect against failure protect against failure means sometimes if there is an some misfunction or an malfunctions happens in a program okay if you tell that if you consider an any task in order to complete that particular task it need to be get completed in an any specific amount of time okay suppose you can consider your ATM machines once you insert your card okay then it is going to set a timer there for around 15 to 20 seconds if you didn't enter the pin at that particular time automatically the system get restarted okay consider in scenario that deadlock situation infinite loop that same ATM example suppose the person standing in front of you inserted his card then it was showing to enter and pin he taken his card and if he has been left out the person who is next standing in a queue in an ATM cannot access the system why because means it has been not restarted it has the earlier task is not completed it is incomplete okay otherwise you need to enter the pin and it need to come out of that particular running process that's why in order to avoid all those failures what they are going to do is as an engineer you know that in order to complete the task by an any processor it is going to consume some certain amount of time you are going to set uh, with an extension of and some delays okay probably everyone may not be at that particular speed okay if it didn't enter in that particular time it is going to get restarted okay that is the main purpose of your watchdog timer okay your watchdog counter simply it uh, starts counting from 0 to defined uh, set value then it gets restarted okay uh, in an ATM machine I told that some 20 seconds okay as soon as you go from a step to step it waits for 20 seconds if you didn't give any input it gets restarted okay those things who have been using an ATM might have felt if they have been taking a long time to process it okay in our MSV 430 the watchdog timer is a 16 bit counter okay if it is 16 bit counter means the maximum count what you can get 65,536 until that count you can be getting and delay count values okay this watchdog timer is protected by a password that is an 5a in the upper byte and lower 8 okay this watchdog timer has a 16 bit control registers out of those 16 bit first 8 bits MSB are used for an password protection that password is 5a and lower 8 bit is used for the configuration of an watchdog timer okay we will see that in an upcoming slide okay just uh, introductory part is we are going to use an watchdog timer against an any failure or in order to come out of an any infinite loop watchdog timer simply counts from 0 to the set value once the counter has been reaching to that particular value it get restarted and once again it start counting from an 0 here the watchdog timer is going to use a 16 bit counter okay it is protected by an password 5a let us see the features of an watchdog timer 8 software selectable time intervals okay that means we can have an 8 different intervals we cannot have an greater than that particular interval that means only an predefined 8 interval points you can set it okay here it is going to operate in, in an watchdog mode and an interval mode in the watchdog mode it simply counts and whenever that particular count has been reached it is going to be resetting in interval mode it is not going to reset the timer it is going to generate an interrupts okay in an earlier uh, modules you might have studied what is an interrupt how it is going to be processed 
okay here it can be also used in a timer mode or in watchdog mode simply you can conclude that watchdog mode is simply it is going to reset the system when th that particular count has been reached in a timer mode it is going to generate an interrupt okay safeguards which ensure that writing to and w control register only using a possible pa password that means whatever the values you are going to assign to the watchdog control re register that should be given through a password only if there is a password wrong it is not going to make any corrections okay it supports an ultra low power using an old mode that means your watchdog mode can be turned off okay at that time you can save the power if you want to utilize you can utilize it otherwise while running in any program at the starting point you can turn off by using that hold to an one value okay this is the internal diagram of an watchdog timer okay this diagram is not given in your textbook okay just for the sake of your understanding i have been added here just you can see it here okay this is the watchdog timer control register part okay this is 16 bit okay here you can see the first uh, 8 bit is used for a password protection i have told that it is going to use an 5a this is msb and this side is lsb here you can see 0101 means it is 5 then 1010 is a 5a password it is whatever the it has been internally it has been having an 5a whatever the input you are going to give if it is exactly equal then only it is going to give an enable signal to an to modification to rest of the system okay first it makes sure that password is correct then it is going to take the next values okay let us see what is the next value it has been there okay on the seventh bit you have an here wdt is nothing but watchdog timer for all the things then you have an old okay if it has been set means here have an selection okay that is nothing but an s sm clock or an a clock okay it is a simple mux with an enable register you can consider here it is an a this is going to select wtt s select means this is going to select which clock my watchdog timer want to utilize that is a clock or an sm clock it is going to select a clock if it is one if it is zero it is going to select sub master clock okay then here it has an enable okay if it is zero means it is not going to okay it may be an active enable or passive enable okay you know that right active enable and then passive enable if it is active enable means whenever it is an one at that time it is going to process the signal if it is zero it may not process it in an passive if it is zero it is going to process if it is one it is not going to process it okay okay now let us see the next thing here we have an wtis1 and wtis0 this is for an selection of an interval okay here i have in two bits means i can take an four configuration right either 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 let us see from this where it has been connected okay here you can see it okay it has been taken to some of the 4 is to 1 max okay for that 4 is to 1 max let us see what all the inputs okay it is taken an input from a 16 bit counter for this 16 bit counter here it has been clocked from my 2 is to 1 max okay this clock can be an sm clock or an a clock from out of this 16 bit counter we need to have a 16 output but here it has been only an 4 output they have been giving an q6 q9 q13 and an q15 as we all know that this is an output from an 6th flip flop 9th and an 13th and an 5th okay if it is taking from an 6th flip flop it is nothing but just divided by an 64 actual frequency what you have been taken that is going to be get divided by 64 if it is from an q9 it is going to be get divided by an 512 if it is q13 it is going to get divided by 8192 if it is q15 it is going to get divided by 32768 okay here out of this four based on my select uh, register here wtit s0 and 1 0 0 means it is going to take 6 0 1 means it is going to take frequently it is going to take the inputs 0 0 means i0 will be selected 0 1 means 
i1 1 0 means i2 1 1 means i1 will be get selected that will be given to an watch stop timer okay i hope everyone have understood this diagram clearly just i will summarize these things okay here it has a 16 bit control register first 8 msb bits have been used to protect against password okay it is going to compare internally with this particular password if it is equal then it going to allow you to make any changes in a system then here I have an 8 register wth hold is foreign to stop watch stop timer or to turn on then here I have an wts select this is to select an clock whether I want to use an A clock or an SM clock then to get an counter delay from either an 6th bit or an 9th bit or an 13th bit or an 15th bit it is going to be selected by last two bits then we have been left out with another four bits here WTT C and TCL is there this is actually used to reset my watch talk timer if I am going to write one to this particular control register means it is going to give an simply clear here it has been or get whenever there is a power up clear or an pulse generator has been reached to a maximum limit it is going to reset this signal okay next we have an WTTM select okay this is to make sure that whether the watchdog timer want to be in a reset mode or an time interval mode based on the bit it is going to take that particular scenario then we have an WTT NMI this is to enable a non maskable interrupt then WT NMIES is to select a non maskable interrupt at a positive edge triggered or a negative edge triggered okay let us try to see the watchdog timer control register okay as I have told that WTT CNT is a 16 bit counter that is not directly accessible by software okay I cannot access to the counter only I can access to the bits okay is controlled through WTT CTL register okay it is also an 16 bit it is actually located in a memory location 0120H okay you can go to your first module part and then memory location there you can see 0210H it has been fixed for your watch talk time or control register okay this upper bit is for a password then lower bit I have an hold NMIES NMI select counter reset then WTTS select for selecting a clock then this is for a checking and interrupts okay let us see that watch stop timer if i have taken from a 6 9 13 15 okay while discussing our previous slide i have told that it can have a maximum of an 8 intervals okay how it can have an 8 intervals for selecting and delay i have an only 2 bits that means i can take an any either 4 of these things right how can it is an 8 is by selecting the clock if i get an a clock it is going to give an 4 intervals if I take an SM clock, I can get an another 4 intervals. That's why they are going to call it as an 8. Okay, if it is 6th bit means it is going to have a 64 count. If it is 9 means 512. 13 bit means 8192. If it is 15 bit means 32768. Okay, if it is, I am using an 32 kilohertz clock frequency. The time period of this 32 kilohertz clock frequency is 31 microseconds. Okay, if I just multiply 64 into 31 microsecond, I am going to get approximately 2 millisecond. In the same way for 512, if I multiply by an 31 microsecond, it is going to give approximately 16. In the same way for an 8192, 250 I am going to get. Then for an 15 bit, 32768, I am going to get an 1000 milliseconds. Okay, if I want to get any of this time delays, I am going to select that particular bit, either 6th bit or an 9th or an 13th or an 15th. In the same way, if I have selected an SM clock, it is going to be taking an 1 megahertz. Okay, if I am taking an 1 megahertz, I will be getting an 1 microseconds. Okay, if I just multiply 64, it is going to get an 64 microsecond or I can call it as an 0 0.064 milliseconds. 9 bit means 5 milliseconds, 13 bit means 8 milliseconds, 15 bit means 32 milliseconds. Okay, if I am using this frequencies means if I am using an SM clock, the maximum delay I can get is 32 milliseconds. If I am using an 32 kilohertz means I am able to get 1000 milliseconds. Okay, beyond this limit I cannot get any delay. Okay, that is the thing you need to take into consideration. Okay, if in an MSP 430 the slowest clock is we are going to call it as an 32 kilohertz. 
that means if i am using a watch stop timer means maximum i can get only an 1000 millisecond suppose if you want to get an uh, 250 millisecond means if you are taking from an sm clock means nowhere you cannot achieve this particular delay okay based on your time interval make sure that you are going to select a particular clock okay based on the selection here i have been tabulated the column if it is zero means i have told that by default it is going to take a sm clock if it is one means it is going to take an a clock if it is zero means if it is taken and one one means it is going to take an sixth bit then if it is one zero means it is going to take an next bit that is nothing but an 9th bit okay let us go back here you can see if it is 0 1 1 means it is going to take this particular 6th bit if it is 1 0 means it is going to take 9 if it is 0 1 means it is going to take 2 if it is 0 0 means it is going to take 1 okay by seeing this number you can have a memorization that if it is 0 0 means 1 0 1 means 2 one zero means three one one means four okay it is in an descending order fashion okay in the same way here if i am taking an one means at that time it is going to take an a clock if i am using an one one means it is going to take sixth bit okay at that time i am going to get this particular value okay this one you can calculate by yourself here why we have been mixed an a clock and sm clock in this adder is in order to make sure that delays properly okay if i want to get an 0 0.064 i am going to get an sm clock if i want to get an 0.5 millisecond i am going to get sm clock if i want to get an 1.9 millisecond i am going to get an a clock from an sixth bit then if i want to get an 8 millisecond i am going to get it from an sm clock by using an 13th bit then if i want to get an 16 millisecond i am going to get an a clock by choosing an ninth counter output pin in the same way if i want to get an 32 millisecond i am going to use sm clock okay zero zero means i am going to get an the maximum okay that is from an 15th bit okay then for 250 millisecond we are going to get an a clock then for 1000 millisecond we are going to get from an 15th Okay, this table you can calculate by yourself, we will be getting properly. Okay, now let us see an bit 2, okay, that is select 0 and 1. Okay, selects the clock source for a watch stop counter. Okay, this one you have been understood from here itself. Okay, if it is 0, 0 means counter will get selected from a 15th bit. If it is 0, 1 means it is 13th bit. 1, 0 means 9th bit. 1, 1 means 6th bit okay then bit 3 okay that is an wdt cnt that is an watch stop counter clear register if i am going to write one to that particular counter means the counter uh, watch stop 16 bit counter will be cleared to an 00h okay let us go for an fourth bit okay this is for selecting an watch stop timer in a watch stop mode or an interval mode if it is zero means simply it will be going in a watch stop mode it is going to reset if it is one means it will be in an interval mode okay then we have an bit 5 nmi bit it selects the function of an reset or nmi input pin if it is zero means input works as an reset input if it has been made and one means it has been going to make it as a non maskable input with an edge sensitive then we have an sixth bit okay if it is zero means the non maskable interrupt is going to be working under a rising edge if it is one means it is going to be working under a falling edge okay then we have an old zero means watch stock timer is fully active if it is one means the clock multiplexer and counters are stopped okay that means in this circuit what it is it is an active enable or passive enable it is an passive enable okay then we have an fail safe source for an watch stop timer okay for this watch stop timer we have an clock source from an sm clock and an a clock probably in a, in your previous model you might have studied an low power mode 0 low power mode 1 low power mode 3 and then low power mode 4 right 
suppose if you want to push and system into a low power mode for means all the clocks will be disabled it will be in a ram retention mode okay suppose if you have made an uh, system in a timer mode in timer interval mode means the that watchdog timer may be taking an a clock as a source suppose if you try to push a system into a low power mode zero then my watchdog timer may stop and it may not generate any interrupt at all to start a system okay that is called as an fail safe logic okay to preserve watchdog talk clocks okay in order to preserve that watchdog clock what you are going to do is we are the latest msp 430 is come up with an wdt plus okay that is nothing but it doesn't let the device enter to an low power mode 4 because of that disabling its clock if the watchdog timer is active means then if you are trying to push a system into a low power mode the system doesn't allow the system to be getting into a low power mode 4 if it is having a WDT plus in the same way if you in the same way if you are trying to push low power mode 3 means at that time if you are going to use an SM clock as a source means in a low power mode 3 your only A clock will be active at that time if it your watchdog timer is using an S submaster clock as a clock source means at that time it will not allow the system to push into a low power mode 3 okay how you can uh, use an watchdog timer in an interval mode okay first thing is you are going to set the wtm select bit to an interval mode by setting to an 1 then the period for the same as before again you are going to get an w dtifc interrupt flag okay this is going to set an interrupt flag whenever it is going to reach the time limit okay the time interval is same as from your earlier things you can select your clock source or you can select the which counter bit you want to utilize but the only difference between your watchdog mode to interval mode mode is there straight away when the timer interval has reached it is going to do the reach start to the system but here it is going to select wdt ifg interrupt flag okay you then it restart from zero and once again it start counting okay before uh, utilizing in an interval mode make sure that you are going to enable that in an status register gie general enable bin and then wite interrupt enable watchdog timer interrupt enable pin has been made enable Thank you.